So guys, I need to discuss, I've got a bit of a problem with my Golf R. I wanted to ask for your advice actually a little bit on it. And while I'm kind of going through this, I wanted to kind of explain some of the issues you can get with the Mark 7 Golf R. I've owned mine for about six years. It's basically been on the channel. Well, it started the channel really. And um, yeah, I'm going to go through about that. Hopefully it really helps you out. Hopefully you can help me out. And um, yeah, quite a few things to discuss in today's video actually. So let's uh, get straight into this. But for the Golf R, oh my God, I've been driving it now a lot more. I've done about 48,800 miles in this car and I've loved every mile of it and if you can't be bothered to watch the rest of this video buy a Mark 7 Golf R, find a clean one, find a one with low owners, full service history and you're pretty much sorted. Mine's a three door manual in limestone grey, it's a 2017 car, it's after April 2017 so I get a slightly lower tax bracket but it's just before the facelift and I've absolutely loved this car. Um, they're you know ultimately overall all cars do have some problems and this car yeah has had some issues in the past so let's just talk through a little bit of that, those before the current one that i've currently would not like some help with the main one bro actually you see my car's a three door five doors can sometimes leak that's one thing it can leak through the seals if you have a five door that's any mark 7 golf mine is a six speed manual which i will show you there you go here's the manual six speed manual now this clutch <laughs> the stock clutch which is on mine is never up for the job it's um basically if you ever check on forums and things they're kind of known as like a chocolate clutch <laughs> um i laugh but i shouldn't really laugh because it cost me about a grand to replace that clutch about thirty-five thousand miles so not exactly a nice thing and um, that's about a year and a half ago and that's on my channel and documented um yeah even 300 horsepower 280 pound foot of torque um it's a bit much for this clutch if they went for a more reinforced clutch it makes it harder as a daily because the clutch becomes quite stiffer you can get an uprated clutch there's loads of stuff you can do i've stuck with the stock clutch i do take this car easy i've actually got a revised um from vw clutch which i think I believe helped a few things um i've probably done about ten thousand miles now on the new clutch and it's feeling absolutely fine um and again i've loved the car in terms of the inside because this is a golf it's just built so well i mentioned before i got some sort of rattle at the top left i can't bloody find where it is because it's like when you're driving you can't check it out and i don't really have any passengers in the car so it's like yeah that's annoying and i keep pushing in things pushing like the roof and pushing the stuff it's a minor thing and it only really comes up because the rest of the interior trims and stuff even after six years don't rattle at all so it's, it's just a little bit noticeable i think something might have come loose i don't know um, but that's just one of those things other than that inside um this car has been fantastic and actually i like with the mark 7s you get little little secret cubby holes like that and um, which i can let you know now because like for example now i'm gonna go for a nice walk and you could put like your keys in there or something like that should you wish i wouldn't really necessarily always recommend stuff like that but it's just hidden out of the way a lot of people if the worst case scenario happened would go for glove box and something the big issues with these cars is unfortunately under the hood they have an issue with the thermostat housing and the water pump um, it's a common issue on the ea triple eights the two liter um, this engine is actually on so many cars it's on mccann's skoda's golf r's audi s3's tt's so many platforms and yeah it basically leaks it just is again it's just poor plastic i think i had to replace mine it cost me about 750 pounds for that and but that was done that was done about last year i think and things have been good on that that's been kind of like some of the major issues that you can kind of have with this and as this type video is titled with problems i'm going to discuss some of the problems but once those are sorted which they have done the car's been so so good and it's really good it's got a major service coming up i've got full vw service history with this one so it'll have a haldex sparks everything yeah oil filter pollen all of that and um, it will do me proud for a little bit longer and yeah it, it's been it's been super super fun so what is this video specifically about then why am i saying i've got a current problem well it was a little bit annoying because I, I took the car to a really good event actually. It was RS at RS Coombs. Um, met a load of fast forward owners and it was really, really great to kind of just, yeah, just to be around and then um, see some cool cars. I met up with my friend who had a Golf R, which I mentioned in, my, um, in a previous video. On my car, I have pretty much, yeah, I'm very OCD. So everything is pretty much as perfect as it could be for me. Um, I changed discs on my car. 
So I upgraded my disc to a genuine OEM Club Sport S disc. I actually got it from a subscriber on the channel, actually. I met up with him. I've, I've driven this car before. And um, I think they're really cool. They are really good. They're two-piece. And there's an update on how they are. I would recommend them. They're so, so good. They're so, so good. Brembo pads. I've also got Brembo discs and pads at the rear as well. And these are actually galvanised, so you don't get the rust shown there, which is super good. Um, and I'm really, really happy with that. And actually, while I'm back here, you might notice you can see some of these marks here. Quite common on the Cadiz wheels. Um, yeah, they get these little, just, I don't know what it is. Oh, but it's just annoying and you can't really repair these too well because you have to skin them. That's just one minor thing and it does kind of ruin the look because I actually quite like the Cadiz. I like it on 18s. I like the thinner tyre width. Um, yeah, it's. I think it looks better as well, personally, for me, as much as I like the pretz. But yeah, those were the brakes done. So it was to my surprise when I reached Castle Coombs last week and I was like, hmm, that's not normal. That's not normal. And yeah, I kind of need your advice. So I checked the disc on this side and can you see, hopefully in the light, I don't know if you can, can you see the little line just shown there? It's just a little bit, just a whole way across. There's a line and what's basically happened is I can imagine a little stone has got into the caliper or between the brake pad and it's just caused the groove. Now it's very thin, I have to say, like my, you can really kind of see, I can't even get my nail in. I can barely feel a groove. It's just like a graze. So I don't know if it's come out already. So if it's the stone has come out and it was just there for a little bit or if it's still in there and grazing, I don't think it is, to be honest with you, because just checking it now, I've driven the car a fair bit and I haven't noticed anything. What would you recommend for that? Would you think I should be worried about it? I mean, it's very, very minor, but it's just a little bit annoying because, yeah, you kind of don't want it. These are kind of pretty much brand new discs. I've barely done any miles on them. So it's a tough one. It's an interesting one. Um, so, yeah. I kind of need your advice on that little one. Little minor problem, but something that I, yeah, I didn't really necessarily expect, which, yeah, it's just one of those things, I guess. Um, but one of the reasons why I got those Cub Sport S discs was because, um, was because they actually looked pretty cool as well. So yeah, I could recommend the discs, but those are the things that can happen inside the caliper. You get a stone in there, you know, and that's what can go on. But I'm interested to know your thoughts in the comments to kind of give me some advice around that. And yeah, overall being back in this car, as you can see, 45,859 miles, I've really enjoyed it. And you know what, for me, I spend a lot of my time in eco mode. You get a softer throttle, steering's light. It's a really nice chilled place to be. You've got like the eco mode stuff and I just love it. And then yeah, when you wanna have some fun, you can put it in race mode and have a bit of fun. Um, whereas the Focus RS was pretty much just so full on. And I think if people followed me for long enough, I don't particularly drive massively hard, particularly on the road. Um, I'll save that kind of stuff for the track. Not that I've taken any of my cars on track. So that's, that's where that is. But I tell you what, a stone in the caliper can, in some cases, be a big problem, which is exactly what I'm going to switch to now. 40 MPG, that's pretty good out of this thing. Right, and you join me here with my friend's Lamborghini Urus Performante with, I believe it's 10 piston carbon ceramic brake discs. So these are the largest brake discs on any road car. Um, this is actually on my drive. I look after it for my friend and it's, yeah, nice and secure here, yeah, just in my back garden, basically. Um, now, the reason why I bring this up, if you were to get a stone in that caliper, I mean, I can't even, this is huge. Yeah, it's, it's a big car, 23 inch wheels, um, absolutely massive. If you were to get a stone in that caliper, and the same thing was happened. I mean, I believe these, um, yeah, I mean, carbon ceramic discs are pretty strong, fade free. That's why the discs, are, uh, the, the wheels are all uh, clean. Um, yeah, expensive is certainly one thing I would say. And normally on brakes, front brakes, you should really be replacing them both if something like that happened. So I should really count myself lucky, really. <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of puts things a little bit into perspective. But something you kind of got to be aware of um, with cars, these things can happen on anything. And yeah, I'm interested to know your advice, actually. Um, you know, it's going to be due a major service soon. I'll probably ask, VW might pick it up and sort of ask about it. It looks pretty minor, but I'm interested to know your thoughts about it. Thoughts in the comments. Subscribe, plenty more content to come.